we can set up SSH key authentication by first generating the keys and then installing the public key onto the server that we want to be able to log into. To generate the SSH keys, we can use SSH keygen. We need to pass in the algorithm that we want to use. A good choice is the ED25519. And optionally, we can pass in how many rounds of encryption to use to keep the key protected when it's being stored on the disk. The default number of rounds is 16. The good number is 16 or larger. The more rounds that you use, in theory, the better protected the key is against cracking attempts. We'll use 128. The file will be named after the algorithm chosen. So if we do nothing, the key is going to be named ID underscore ED25519 because that's the algorithm we chose. But we can change that file name. And it may not be a bad idea if you have a lot of different kinds of keys. You can pick any naming convention you want because the name of the key doesn't matter. Since we're going to use this key for the Kali account, I'll start it off with that and then the name of the host that's going to be used on. And then the name of the algorithm. But again, this name doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the use of the key. So use whatever naming convention that you want to use. Give your key a good passphrase, because if you lose the key, the difficulty of recovering the key is basically the difficulty of guessing what that password is. Once the key is generated, you'll find two files. There'll be the private key file. This is the secret key that you never want to be discovered, that you never want to lose. Then there's the public key, which doesn't even matter if you lose it or not. In fact, you'll actually install this public key onto the server that you want to be able to log into. That's how the server will know that this private key is allowed to be used for authentication. So we need to get the public key up onto the server. And there's an, another program that can do that for you. SSH copy ID will move the key for you, and it has a dash in option or dry run option where you can test whether or not the key copy is going to be successful. So first we need to give the name of the key that we're going to use. And notice we're using the private keys name. We'll use the dash in option in this case just so we can test whether or not this is going to work. And then we log in to the server that we want to be able to use the key on. Of course, we haven't installed the key yet, so we're going to use password authentication. SSH copy key copy ID tells us that it would have copied the keys had we not been in test mode. Now we can install the key by removing the dash in option and logging into the target server with our password. So now the key's been added, and we'll want to try to SSH into the machine with the key to make sure that everything's working. So we're going to log in with the private key. We have to unlock the key to use it. And we're logged into the machine. 